Ontario has an exceptional fire service, but fire and smoke can travel so quickly that despite their best efforts, firefighters might not be able to rescue you or your family if a fire occurs in your home. In fact, most fire fatalities occur when the fire department's response time is five minutes or less. What you are about to see is the actual recreation of a fire that happened in a home early one morning. Even though the firefighters arrived within three minutes of receiving the call, the fire claimed the life of a five-year-old boy. This needless tragedy devastated not only the family, but also friends, firefighters, and the entire community. What we've learned from this recreation, we'd like to share with you. It could save your life or the lives of your loved ones. This reenactment clearly demonstrates how little time you may have to escape a fire in your home. It drives home a very important message. You must take responsibility for your own fire safety. As you are about to see, you may have less than one minute to safely escape a fire in your home. As lead investigator of this fatal fire, I determined the movements of the family. I also considered the amount of time for them to exit the dwelling. The building consisted of two semi-detached homes divided by a cinder block wall. Other than some very minor smoke damage, the adjoining home was intact. Permission to burn the adjoining home provided us with the unique opportunity to recreate this fire in almost identical conditions. We prepared the adjoining home to ensure the furnishings, temperature and conditions reflected those in the destroyed home at the time of the fire. We then set up a fire simulation to test our theory that the fire had started in the wicker chair. But more importantly, it provided an opportunity to test the effectiveness of smoke alarms and the importance of home fire escape planning. In the destroyed home, there was only one smoke alarm located in the hall outside the sleeping area on the second floor. For this reenactment, we installed smoke alarms on both the ground floor and the second floor. We believe that the mother and the three-year-old boy came down the stairs and exited the building, followed by the father and the five-year-old. It's quite likely that the older boy became afraid of the fire and ran back upstairs. It's not uncommon for a child to react that way, which reinforces the need to hold on to your children and to assist them out of the home. We estimate it took 30 seconds to escape the dwelling after the activation of the second floor smoke alarm. That's a critical moment because when the family opened the door and exited the dwelling, the door stayed open and provided oxygen to the growing fire. What you are seeing now is the alcove area in the living room of the simulation home. The kitchen is on the right side of the frame and the front door is on the left. A fire is being ignited on the wicker chair which was determined to be the point of origin of the fire. The equipment hanging from the ceiling are the heat sensors installed to monitor the temperature of the room at various levels. The smoke is now pouring from the ignition point and a small flame is developing. The wicker chair is now burning. The ground floor smoke alarm activates. Remember, there was no ground floor smoke alarm in the actual fire. The fire is still in its early stages, but you can see that the toxic smoke layers are already beginning to accumulate at the ceiling level. If the occupants were alerted to the fire at this point, they would have had more time to safely escape. In a fire, every second counts. There is no time to spare. The smoke alarm on the second floor now activates. This is the alarm the family heard. At this stage, they are getting out of bed, gathering their children, and preparing to escape. These are the fire conditions that the family would have faced as they came down the stairs. At this point, the temperature in the room at the shoulder level is approximately 40 degrees Celsius.
Watch closely what happens to the fire conditions when the front door opens and more oxygen is introduced into the room. At this stage, we believe the mother and three-year-old are now exiting the front door. In the confusion of the growing fire, the father and older boy became separated and the father barely escaped with his life. Unfortunately, the child had run back up the stairs and perished in the fire. Within 30 seconds of the door opening, the temperature on the first and second floors soared to over 700 degrees Celsius. The fire is spreading rapidly throughout the room as flaming paint is dropping onto the furnishings. The room is rapidly approaching its peak temperature of 900 degrees Celsius. All of the materials in the room are now burning and in less than three minutes we have reached flashover conditions. No one can possibly survive these conditions. You can hear the front window shattering. These are the conditions that the firefighters faced as they entered the burning building in attempts to rescue the young victim. Investigators from the Office of the Fire Marshal face these types of cases on a daily basis. The investigation of any fire fatality is never routine. However, the circumstances involving the death of a child are always tragic. This reenactment clearly shows that you cannot risk having a fire in your home. However, tragic situations like this continue to happen across Ontario all too often. You need to do everything you can do to prevent a fire in your home. There are three essential issues that you need to address to protect you and your loved ones from fire. They are prevention, detection, and escape. Prevention. There are simple things that you can do to ensure that fire never starts in your home. Most kitchen fires result from unattended cooking, so stay in the kitchen and look while you cook. If you smoke, smoke outside and keep matches and lighters out of sight and reach of children. Alcohol is an all too common factor in many fatal fires involving cooking and smoking. Keep a close eye on anyone in your home who is drinking, especially if they are cooking or smoking. Keep candles away from anything that can burn and place them in safe, sturdy holders with glass shades. Blow out all candles before leaving the room or going to bed. These are only some of the things that you can do to prevent fires in your home. Detection. If, after your best efforts, a fire does start in your home, you need to know about it right away. Since this fire occurred, the law now requires working smoke alarms on every story of your home and outside all sleeping areas. The fire service recommends that you also install a smoke alarm in every bedroom. The early detection and warning of a fire provided by working smoke alarms can give you and your family the precious seconds you need to safely escape. Remember, it's the law. Escape. Everyone in your home needs to know what to do when they discover a fire or hear the smoke alarm. Most fatal fires occur at night when everyone is asleep, so it's important that you develop a home fire escape plan and practice it with the entire household so everyone knows all possible escape routes to get out safely. Make sure someone assists small children, older adults, or anyone requiring assistance. As this video has demonstrated, a fast, pre-planned escape is critical to survival. There are no second chances in a fire. Another way that you can greatly improve your odds of surviving a fire in your home is to install residential sprinklers. Sprinklers provide excellent fire protection because they can extinguish fires or control and contain them until help arrives. They limit smoke development and spread, giving occupants more time to evacuate and significantly reducing the likelihood of injury and death due to smoke inhalation. Sprinklers can cost as little as one to one and a half percent of the cost to build a new home. If you are building a new home, the fire service strongly recommends that you install sprinklers. The fire service of Ontario is working hard to keep all of our communities safe from fire, but we can't do it alone. We need your help. Adults and children are dying in fires that can easily be prevented. It's your responsibility to keep your family and your home safe from fire. For more information, visit the Office of the Fire Marshal website or contact your local fire department.